welcome back. If this is your first time here, my name is Tiffany. Um, you may hear my child or my animals making some ruckus from time to time. Welcome to my life. Uh, today's video is going to be about the adoption process of my son from the foster care system. I have two dogs. I have a German Shepherd Husky mix and I have a Siberian Husky. And um, because I could not conduct our our visits in my home, I was uncertain if my child would like my dogs or if there would be some friction. So, you know, flying back home, the flight was fine. It was his first flight. He uh, fell asleep. He was fine. Good travel. Still to this day, we travel. He's been on many plane rides just, you know, to finalize our adoption. And then we've traveled. So he travels a lot and he's a good eight, nine, ten hours on the flight. He's amazing. So um, when we got home, we got into the house. I put up a baby gate between the kitchen and the back door uh, where the adults were outside. And, um, allow the dogs to come in and of course they bum rush right through the house but they stop because of the baby gate and even though they're larger dogs they're obedient dogs so if I put up a gate they know it means you stay you stay behind so um he immediately like screeched <laughs> and made me pick him up and he just said monsters <laughs> so I was like, oh my god, no, 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 no. Like, what do I do with my child? Don't like the dogs. Like, I literally, in that moment, internally panicked because I'm like, either he's going to like the dogs and the dogs are going to like him, one of them has to go. If not, I'm like, I just bought the child home and I've had the dogs um, four years. <laughs> oh my god, like, I can't pick the child over the dog, but. I cannot pick the child over the dog. <laughs> like, like I was, it was such a conflict because how could you disregard a human life for animals? But those animals were my babies all those years. Like, I couldn't just disregard my babies for my new baby. So I was like, oh my God, this doesn't work. I don't know what to do. Like, so I was like, maybe I'll keep them separate. But I was like, that's stupid. So I didn't have to really think too much about it long because within the hour he was best friends with the dogs the dogs loved him he loved the dogs uh while the shepherd is more of his like bff the husky is more of a eh, i mean i'll kick it with you if you do something interesting otherwise i'm gonna be up under mom so i did have that concern the adjustment home was really ideal as well he slept in his own room without issue he slept through the night he ate well um he was an overall overall really pleasant and easy child he did come with his own um issues like <laughs> within the first few days he called me a b-i-t-c-h <laughs> and he used it in context that's what it was i he had came downstairs and I had, he asked for something. I said no. And I told him to go use the bathroom because he, I was potty training him. He wasn't potty trained when he came. But within that first week, I had him potty trained 100%. So I told him, go potty. He asked me again. I said, no, go potty. And he said, mom, you're a B-I-T-C-H. I said, did you just call me? Yes. <laughs> I asked him like three or four times in a row. And I kept shaking my head like, did you call me? yes and the funny thing is he was smiling the whole time like he has the mo most adorable smile i was like did you call mommy a and he's like yes <laughs> so so he you know gallivants to the bathroom and uh as he gets his potty chair he's climbing up into the uh potty i put my little hands on his little thighs and i asked him again did you call mommy a and he said yes <laughs> so i let him do his business and when he was done i brought him to the sofa because i did not want to um dilute any of the potty training we had done 
by scolding him while he's on the potty. So I waited till he was done. I brought him to the living room. We sat on the sofa and I said, we don't say those words. Um, they hurt mommy's feelings. They're not nice words. They're not for children. Mommy doesn't say it and you don't say it either. Um, <laughs> so he, he has some choice words in the beginning that we have to work through. But he was able to quickly outgrow those bad words. I think it's exposures because I don't swear. Um, he now doesn't swear. And people will say, oh, he's so polite and well-mannered. And I'm really big on manners, really big on manners. So when I speak to him, I'm always like, yes, please, thank you, no thank you. So he naturally just developed the same lingo in his uh, vocabulary when it's just first habit for him at this point so let's quickly get into the realities of adoption at least for me um, I'm gonna refer to my notes because I want to stay as on topic as possible and get done quickly um, although for the most part this entire experience has been really truly ideal and a blessing we did have you know the reality set in which was first i put down love when i met him for the first time it was not instantaneous love or parental love at first sight it wasn't even parental love the first second or probably even the third month that we together we did not have that um bond we had to develop it so and it wasn't just one-sided it was mutual where he did sometimes i questioned if he even liked me because you know um which is the second part of you know the realities of adoption um uh, affection he would not allow me to hug him or to kiss him or to show him any type of affection for the first full month like he kept mushing me and pushing me to the side but I always offered him the opportunity to be embraced if he wanted to and he chose not to did I hold it against him did I become upset absolutely not because I know that I had to build a trust and a bond with him first and I was willing to wait and take the time he needed without making him feel bad about it. Um, I did fake it till you make it, fake it till you make it. I did a lot of that in the beginning because although I didn't feel that parental love, I still every day told him love you, love you, love you. And he never said it back to me, um, not in the beginning. And that was also okay. I know that the first month it was just like basically caring for a child and then the second month I realized that I really really actually really like this kid <laughs> he was still kind of like a kid um, the third month I um, started forming an attachment to him and it was mutual um the first month it was just like mutual like mm, let's get to know each other the second month i think we both mutually liked each other and we had transitioned into hugs um and he had started begrudgingly let me kiss him on the cheek <laughs> and i think that more so came about when um we were doing trial runs with daycare so I was starting to drop him off to get him acclimated into going because I was only taking three months off from work so in the second month I started taking him for a couple of hours getting him adjusted towards the end of the second month and giving him kisses goodbye like the other parents did so he was like seeing this his peers and he's like okay let's hug and you can kiss my cheek but it was like <laughs> so um three months in um there was definitely mutual bonding and mutual affection mutual um caring for each other and then 
month four is when I started to feel that, oh my gosh, I think I'm a mom. <laughs> I started to feel that maternal affection. I guess it's the word I'm looking for. Um, I started very, I started to transition from caregiver to maternal figure. By month five, I absolutely, with all my heart, loved him um, without a doubt, was fully attached to him, fully bonded to him, and it was reciprocated 100% without a doubt. Like, if you are a parent and you birth your child or you were present in your child's life, whether via birth or adoption, from birth or from really young infancy, then you may not know what I mean when I say when you see the look of love in your child's eye because you are desensitized maybe because you've never, there has never been a point where your child has not loved you. So for me, because I, I, I knew my child when he didn't love me, when he didn't know me, when he didn't trust me, that look originally the first couple months in his eye versus by the time we got to month four to five, it's 100% different. Definitely from five months, six months on, he has looked at me in a 100% different way with love and affection. And like, it's like, I don't know. All I can say is, is love. He loves me. I love him. He, by month five, is now telling me, I love you. Um, he's giving me hugs and kisses all by himself. Um, super affectionate and just what I would have probably perceived um, a biological child's interaction with a parent would be by month five and six. As with a lot of older children um, in foster care, they come with past, they come with histories, and my son was no different. Um, he had an odd, I can't say odd because I can't um, devalue his experiences. However, I don't know what his experience was um, because I did not know prior to receiving him in my home that he was terrified of police. Granted, there are a lot of kids on my work um, caseload who are also afraid of police because they've come into their home. The police has all um, removed them from their parents before. So they correlate police with, oh no, somebody's going to take me uh, type of ordeal. So I'm like, hmm, maybe he had that experience and it just kind of subconsciously followed him or maybe he actively remembered. But we had to work on um, him at two years old being frightened of police because we went to a park one time and he see, seen a policeman and freaked out. So we had to, you know, go to the police car, try to take pictures with the police car. Look how cool sirens, you know, they're good people. Um, he also, for the first um, maybe like eight to ten months, had solid memories of his foster home. Um, and even uh, maternal family, maternal aunt, maternal grandmother. Um, yeah, so um, now I feel like to him, his maternal grandmother and all his aunties that he's received from my family kind of had, kind of um, has overlaid his other memories. So I think he thinks they're all the same people at this point. But um, he did come with memories, and he had them solid for the first, you know, good part of the first year. Now, I think he truly has forgotten that he is adopted because for the first full month, any time that he was upset with me or I didn't respond to his needs as urgently as he wanted me to, he would call me, No, Mommy! And he would say it just like that <laughs> with passion. Um, I was new mommy anytime he was upset with me for the first month. So, and then occasionally, even month two and three, um, he would randomly call me new mommy. Um, but now, you know, he was, a, he was two and a half 
um, then and now he's gonna be four and another minor reality for me is because my child was a toddler he was talking but <laughs> I had no idea what he was saying you know what toddlers if you're not around them a lot or it's not your kid or family member or friend they have their own language as is so it's like what are you saying so it took me it really took me the first entire month also to learn his communication patterns because he has a strong slish <laughs> mommy sh um so um i had no idea for the first month what he was trying to say to me most of the time i'm just like tell mommy again what hmm oh okay Chuck E. cheese so that is super minor but it is something that i did notice um affected our ability to bond quicker is because he would become frustrated that I had no idea what he was saying. Another reality is the insensitivity of other people. Oh, people don't mean to be hurtful, but they are. And it's just the lack of knowledge on their behalf of the adoption process. Um, I... It's already nerve-wrecking introducing your new child to the world, but it's made even just an unpleasant experience when the world in front of your child would say, I often got the response, oh, I didn't know you had a baby. When did you have a baby? When were you pregnant? I wasn't. I adopted. Oh, okay. Oh, he's not your real child. Excuse me? Excuse me? Um, and then they were repeated right in front of him. He's not your real son. That bothers me. Then it bothered me. Then it bothers me now. He is my real son. He will always be my real son. But people, you know, uninformed <laughs> would say things like that, and it, it hurt me that it was said so callously in front of my child. Don't devalue his standing in my life because I did not birth him like it, it's just it disgusted me so um I also had people say um oh do you want your own kids one day <laughs> um I got my own kid right there and uh, so one day is here I mean but you like your own real kids again own kid real kid my kid mm. um i think once again it's just ignorance because i think people are trying to say do you want biological children and like i said earlier we'll see um so we encountered an unbelievably amount of insensitive people when i first started introducing him and unfortunately a lot of those people were at church and it just I then became super protective over him um and kind of shied away from taking him or hanging out because I used to hang around and kind of socialize after church no more I'm in and I'm out because people still can't respect the boundary of my motherhood with him it's still Oh yeah, that's not your real son. Oh yeah, and it's just like I can't let you take my salvation today. <laughs> I gotta go. Um, and then another thing is the boundary with my child. Like people think because they know you, they know your child. No, you've never met him. He doesn't know you. Um, you can't just come up and touch a stranger and think they're gonna be okay with it just because they are a child. So he has endured people. He has the biggest cheeks. People pinching his cheeks, rubbing his hair, uh, trying to hug him and kiss him. One, I don't like that as a parent because I'm teaching him stranger danger and appropriate touches and things of that nature. It's not appropriate for someone who doesn't know him to come up to him and hug him and attempt to put their lips on him, even on the cheek. It's not appropriate. I don't like it as a parent. And I don't like that you just assume that he was going to be okay with it because ultimately he wasn't and he would often complain mid hug when someone's hugging him or pinching his cheeks or trying to kiss him he would go no no he didn't like it um 
And people are like, oh, you got to get used to it. And I just wanted to be like, the audacity of you. Because he doesn't, especially that first, you know, month and two, as I said earlier, where he wasn't allowing me to kiss and hug him. How dare you force my child into a kiss and a hug? And I would try to intercede on his behalf and people just would not respect the boundary. So um, that was the reality for me with adoption as well. Getting other people on board <laughs> with uh, appropriate boundaries for my son. Um, I think also another reality or an adjustment would be becoming a parent becoming a parent like especially as a single adult um minimum support system when you become a parent it totally changes everything about life and they're minor in the the grand scope of life like okay now i can't come and go as i please um now um basically i'm not first in my own life anymore and I know people say you got to take care of you before you can, you know, be good enough to take care of a child. But clear, you know, I will take care of me, but I will always take care of him first. If he's not okay, there's no way I can even process my mind to focus on me. I, I, I think I will be, I will feel selfish. And I actually... This process of adoption and becoming a mother has really totally flipped the script on me. I um, I learned a lot about myself in my journey to motherhood. I had to learn that um, I had to learn to be okay with going outside of my preconceived game plan of how I was going to parent. I had to learn to be open-minded. So that I can grow into my motherhood. Like I didn't have to come with all the answers. I didn't have to be perfect super mom. I, you know, success in growing moments are going to be part of the experience. Um, for example, I swore that I was going to be one of those parents that would not spare the rod. Because you spare the rod, you spoil the child. I'm a firm believer in tap appropriately I became a mom <laughs> and I don't have the heart for it like especially when it comes to foster children they're often abused and you don't want to re-traumatize the child so discipline really depends on the child and with my son as is he doesn't necessarily even require spanking because I can redirect him verbally um, I can give him appropriate consequences, time, you know, timeouts don't really work with him because he will absolutely sit there and smile in his chair and like, just like, oh, it's the best experience ever, mom. And get up and just like, mm -hmm, thanks for the opportunity to sit down with you for three minutes. So timeouts don't work for him. What works for him are some stern verbal redirections and um, removing um, privileges with his tablet, um, taking away a toy or something along that line or no, you know what, we're not going to go to Chuck E. Cheese. No, we're not going to go bowling because he, love, he loves bowling, he loves Chuck E. Cheese. We're not going to do these activities if your behaviors are not appropriate. So make better choices. Um, so that's what I do for him. Will I spank in the future? I totally, I feel like <laughs> I want to, but I just honestly, I don't, I don't have an enemy. I thought I would, but I popped him on the thigh one time. And when I say he looked at me like, like I had just like crushed his whole entire world, like, I had to take a time out after that because I was like, oh my God, I'm the worst mom ever. Like I, it ruined my day. I am not a crier by nature and it took everything in me to not cry and just like have an emotional breakdown. I felt like the scum of the earth. I don't ever want my son to look at me like he did that day, especially after, you know, it took us months for me to earn his trust and his love. I never want him to look at me 
the way he did when I popped his little thigh. And I didn't even hit him hard, but yeah, I think it's just the principle of that. He, he didn't expect me to, you know, even inflict a little bit of, of pain. Like, no. So, in that moment, I realized, like, like I, I don't have the heart for it. But when I see my friends tapping their kids, kind of like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Get them. <laughs> but I, it's just not for me in my parenting style. So, um, yeah, I had to learn that it's okay for me to change my ideas of parenting. So that's just an example. But ultimately, this has been an amazing experience for me. I could never even imagine loving anyone more than I love this little guy here. He is the best thing that's ever happened to me. I can't even imagine my life without him. I can't imagine what I was doing before him. That's my baby. And I'm blessed to have the opportunity to be called mom by him and to raise him as my child. I am appreciative to his birth family. Ugh. I'm appreciative to his birth family and um, I will remain open to a relationship between him and his birth family as long as they are appropriate and will respect the role that I am now in his life. It does not mean that his birth parents are not his parents because at the end of the day, his biological parents and I, we are both his parents. I am his mommy. I am raising him. I am taking care of him. I am loving him. He's all at this point. From two till now plus, I'm the only mommy he's going to ever know unless told otherwise. And I'm willing to share him with his birth family as long as everyone can just remain safe, appropriate, and respectful of each person's role. Um... I do plan to tell him the information that I do know and I will never down talk his birth family to him ever. I will never try to attempt to persuade him to think negatively about his family. I will allow him to form his own opinions and um, I just, um, I don't take lightly the ability, I don't take lightly his birth family's loss um, and I'm sorry to the birth family for his absence. And uh, to the birth parents, um, thank you for making an incredible little boy. And I will always love and take care of him. Heading to the airport with Auntie Portia. <laughs> That's appropriately. Um, it's dark in here. I should hit a light. But I'm in my hotel room. Ah! Um phone call uh, from your foster mom Deb and she says that you insisted that that she calls um, me right now so that you can say good night to me say hi 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 what are you doing hi. so you can ready to go night night mm. yeah you can ready to go night night who is that Teddy bear? Yeah? Can you, can you count? Eat that six. Let's go one, then what? Two, three. <laughs> First plane ride for Isaiah. Say hi. Hi. Where are you at? Hey John, they're back You're in on the room plane? 22. Say I'm on an airplane. Yeah, airplane. Yeah. Oh, I will play airplane with mommy. With mommy. Hi <laughs> ha! <laughs> <laughs> I get the bad man. I get the bad Doing your homework? Yeah. What letter?
letter is this? A. A, good job. A is for? Apple. A is for? Acorns. A is for? Oakland. Awesome, who's smart? Me. Yeah. Okay. We just finished our first theater experience. Huh, say hi. hi. To the camera, look. Hi. What'd you just go see? You went to see Spider-Man? Yeah. And who else? Hulk. And who else? Yeah? And and who's the green guy? Oh, that's a Hulk, huh? Yeah. What does the Hulk say? Hulk smash! Hulk smash, yeah. Good job. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. little big boy happy birthday to you Woo! whose birthday is it yeah who's having a birthday party today it's my birthday now it's your birthday now yeah. yay i know the dogs are saying yay okay i say yes
adoption is such an amazing experience there are you know challenges as with any event in life it's never probably going to ever go perfectly but that's okay so i encourage anyone who is considering adoption you know look into it see if it's right for you and your family and don't be afraid to go forward if you believe that it is and not all foster parents are gems so we have a lot of children in foster care who need homes newborns up to teenagers um, that are needing forever families i'm just gonna leave it at that so um thank you for joining me if you have questions or concerns about my adoption experience or um, regarding the adoption process in general go ahead and leave me a question or a comment you can also email me i'll put it in the description box below oh i'm trying not to cry um subscribe if you want to become a new addition to my family and uh, don't forget to hit the notification bell which is next to the subscribe button if you would like to know every time that i post a new video otherwise i will see you guys next time thank you for visiting me and take care